David, in your lecture with the Yale Youth Ministry Institute today, you, you, you traced an arc of the understanding and role of beauty in our culture and in our theology. But in the turn to the questions of youth ministry, you, you wanted to pause and do some groundwork about the intersection of our understanding of beauty and adolescent developmental phases and, and, and capacities. Could you just tease that out for us a little bit more? Well, I, I want to, the, the larger argument that I'm trying to make is that adolescence is a key time for beauty, for aesthetics. And this, we catch a glimpse of this, uh, the primacy of aesthetics, in the key sort of theorist of adolescence, in G. Stanley Hall and in Eric Erickson. As I've already said, um, Hall sees young people, adolescents, as this time of life when young people are coming alive their hearts are being opened to the world. They're perceiving beauty in the world. They're cultivating this romance with the world that later becomes systematized in their thinking and in their you know, acting in the world. Um, and so, uh, so, so that's, Hall is uh, basically articulating an aesthetic theory of adolescence. Uh, th this gets dropped by later theorists of adolescence. Uh, which I, I think is really a mistake. I really think it's a key aspect of uh, human development, and we need to, you know, pay attention to it and reclaim it, maybe refine it, but it's still important. Later on, Eric Erickson, by the mid 20th century, uh, begins talking about adolescence as a as a stage of life when their primary task is the achievement of identities to achieve an identity, and then he goes on to describe what he means by that. And basically, it's a, for Erickson, it's a time of life when everything is bracketed, nothing is taken up by uh, technical rationality for technical reasons. It, it's, it's bracketed in order that youth may play with their life, in order that they may knit together an aesthetic construction of their selves that draws from the materials of their own experiences, their own psyche, but also connects with the lore and the, the ways of their community. And, and, and in, in that sort of uh, trying to achieve a, a homeostasis between those two, uh, they're, they're trying to knit together an identity um, that fits in that world. But not only that, Erickson goes on to talk about the human life cycle, all of the stages of human life. Uh, he doesn't want to talk about it as other theorists do, as sort of a ladder. Um, he, are unilaterally, uh, you know, moving in one direction. He sees it as a circle. He sees it in, in a sense as uh, when young people find that sense of self, they are then taken up into the art of the community and given a certain role within that community. And so the picture you're getting here is that Erickson is painting is, uh, is very explicit as a, a community becomes art a work of art and young people play a certain role in that beauty that is community. So anyway, I'm just uh, I'm just playing with these ideas and making these connections. I do think there's something important about us um, engaging young people in art and an aesthetic uh, attention to aesthetics, attention to beauty, uh, both perceiving it uh, and, and, and participating with it and creating it and uh, I think there's a sense in which those forms of educating youth uh, play a large role in helping them find or achieve that sense of self that Erickson saw as, a, as an aesthetic construct. So that's my argument. I, I think there are lots of ways to go deeper and, and more sophisticated directions, but for now I think that's the, the argument that I want to make is that I do think beauty and art and aesthetics, uh, the adolescence is a key time of life uh, for exploring aesthetics.